fix this better. It, it's not a warning. It's not a threat. It's a promise. Let me. Things are gonna fall. Oh my god, you're the reason why I'm singing this crap. I don't remember singing that. Yes, you did. Wait, I mean, I just sang it because you were singing. What? I was still with what? Oh my Who is that? It's me and this is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, there's the music. It's not a warning. It's not a threat. It's a promise. I can kind of see my... Put it down. Right now at 6, an officer is lucky to be alive after bullets hit his car while on patrol. And the police chief says he's had enough. It, it's not a warning. It's not a threat. It's a promise. Now the hunt is on for the people responsible. A family mourned the sudden death of this Yalabusha County woman. But turns out she's well alive and faces jail time. Plus, a woman and a teenager now sit in the Noxby County Jail for the recent death of a Macon man. The latest details in just a minute. And after seeing a dry start to our Saturday, rain is back in the picture for a lot of us. I'll have the timing and what we can expect as we head into our Super Bowl Sunday all coming up. Players in the Super Bowl have got their start in this stadium behind me. I'm Garner Montgomery live in Starfield where A.J. Brown and Willie Gay Jr. made their mark. Live, local, late-breaking, this is WTVA 9 News. Good evening and thank you for joining us on WTVA 9 News at 6. I'm Michelle Martin. Tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday and the starting lineup for the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs will feature two Starkville natives. WTVA's Garner Montgomery is live outside Yellow Jacket Stadium where Eagles receiver A.J. Brown and Chiefs linebacker Willie Gay worked once teammates. And today, the city of Starkville celebrated this achievement with a pep rally. Family, friends, coaches, city leaders, and fans gathered to celebrate their hometown heroes. A.J. Brown and Willie Gay used to be teammates at Starkville High School and grew up in the same church, both Starkville natives, and now they'll be facing each other on the field, and one of them will earn a Super Bowl championship ring. Now, I talked to one of the former coaches. He said this is a big deal for the city of Starkville, but not at all unexpected. And Starkville is just a uh, blue-collar community, man. People work hard, uh, expectations extremely high, refuse to lose, refuse to give in to temptation, uh, just continue to be great people, man, and it couldn't happen to two finer guys. I asked a few people uh, which team they're going to be rooting for this year, and they all pretty much gave the same answer. They don't care who wins. They're just rooting for the Starkville boys. So let's hope Jalen Hurts throws all the touchdowns to A.J. Brown and all the picks to Willie Gay. Reporting live from Starkville, Garner Montgomery, WTVA 9 News. And right now you're getting a live look in Starkville right, so where the Starkville boys were once teammates. A lot of wet roadways are happening right now, Maggie. For people that are celebrating or coming back from that Super Bowl pep rally, what can they expect? Yeah, not only there in Starkville in the Golden Triangle region, but the majority of Northeast Mississippi right now is seeing some type of rainfall. As you can see behind me from Lee County over into Grenada County, and then the majority of that moderate even to heavy rainfall really sitting over Octibaha County in the Golden Triangle region. But all of us seeing that rainfall this evening, and that's not going to be heading off anytime soon. As we zoom in here, who is seeing that 
really moderate even to heavy rainfall is Vernon, Alabama counties all the way into the Golden Triangle region from Columbus, Aberdeen over into Starkville. And as I said, that's going to be continuing over the next few hours. Another thing you're going to be seeing as you're headed out the door, if you are headed out the door this evening, is winds. We've seen gusty winds really all day long. That's staying true as we head into our evening. 10 miles an hour here in Tupelo, but look at that 18 and that's sustained winds in Columbus gusting even up into 20. But as I said, that rainfall is going to be sticking with us. But Michelle, I do have some good news about our Super Bowl Sunday and I'll have it all in the main weather after the break. A Columbus Police Department are looking for the people responsible for shooting at an officer. The shooting happened near 14th Avenue North and Railroad Street at about 1245 Friday morning. Columbus Police Chief Joseph Daughtry says two cars were driving at a high speed, possibly in a chase when the shots were fired. One bullet went through the windshield of the unmarked car. You see that right here. The front and the back windshields were both shattered. You can see that right here on your screen where that back windshield is shattered. Here's an up close look at that. The glass from the windshield hurt the officer's face. Chief Daughtry says he has every intent of catching the people responsible. We got to send a message. You know, this is not wild, wild, wild west. Uh, you're not going to shoot in the city of Columbus and just shoot at somebody. Uh, we're going to catch you and we're going to put you in jail. So, I mean, you can take it how you want, but it, it's not a warning. It's not a threat. It's a promise. No arrest has been made, but Chief Daugherty, Daugherty says they do have leads. If you have any information, call Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. A woman and a teenager were charged with killing a Macon man a week after he was shot. Police Chief Davine Beck says that ch they charged this woman, DeAmber Shea Bush. A 17 year old is also facing the same charge. Macon police are not releasing their name at this time. London Rupert was shot while driving on Martin Luther King Jr. Street last Friday. Officers found Rupert with a gunshot wound to his head. He later died at a Jackson hospital. Bush and the unidentified teen remain in jail without bond. Now stay with WTVA 9 News for the very latest. A report of possible child abuse ended a week later when a Pontotoc County man facing a half dozen felony sex and abuse charges. Oxford police responded to a home on Burns Avenue back in January to take a report of child abuse. The investigation ended 10 days later with the arrest of Jamar Brown. You see him right here on your screen. He is charged with sexual battery, three counts of child endangerment and two counts of touching a child for lustful purposes. His bond is set at $120,000. A Tupelo woman is officially charged with the death of a child that fell out of a cart in South Tupelo. It happened back in 2020. This is Nashiana Crump. U.S. Marshals found her in Lee County, just south of the Tupelo city limits. Investigators say a two year old died November 2020 after falling from Crump's car on South Gloucester Street. That child was hit and killed by another car. A judge set her bond at $50,000 for manslaughter. Meanwhile, Yala Busha County deputies made a weird arrest. A woman found herself in handcuffs for her own death. Tech out Charlotte Thrash obituary. Authorities say the 53 year old faked her own death by creating this obituary on the Forever Missed website. It says she passed away on Sunday in Jackson. There are pictures of her on the website along with a tribute by her daughter. And the post says her ashes were to be spread at Gums Crossing Bridge on Grenada Lake. But Charlotte Thrash is very much alive and behind bars. Sheriff investigators charged her with conspiracy to the defraud the state and tampering with evidence. The sheriff says they're trying to figure out why she lied about her death in the first place. The city of Kosciuszko is working on a new dog ordinance after several incidents involving dangerous animals. Breezynews.com reports the new ordinance incorporates parts of the previous ordinance along with some recent changes. These are to regulate dolls like pit bulls, which the mayor says are the subject of frequent complaints. The ordinance will be considered at the next Board of Aldermen meeting. It lays out the responsibilities of dog owners and the consequences if someone is attacked. Mayor Tim Kyle says there are a lot of streets in Kosciuszko where it's not safe to walk because of vicious dogs. Violations will result in a minimum fine of $500 and up to $1,000 and the possibility of six, six months in jail. 
New at six, a man is sitting behind bars after he was accused of stealing a truck. Houston Police Chief Adam Harmon says someone reported this white Ford Ranger truck stolen on Friday. Chief Harmon says Brandon Taylor was arrested and charged with grand larceny that same day. We're working to learn when Tanner will go before a judge. The grieving family of an Amory man who died in a recent shooting will have a candlelight vigil next week. Dennis Ezell's sister tells WTBA the family is holding a candlelight vigil for him next Saturday. That's the 18th at 6 o'clock that evening. It will happen at J Avenue and 111th Street. Ezell died from his injuries at the hospital. Amy Police says Jermaine McIntosh, who you see right here, has been charged with his death. He sits in jail on a $300,000 bond. After months of construction and much anticipation, a once empty store now has a fresh new start in Aberdeen. That and more as the News at 6 continues. And we're seeing a wet evening right now. If you're headed out in the next few minutes, make sure to grab that umbrella. But I do have some good news as we head into our Super Bowl Sunday. Stay with us and I'll have all the details after the break. Yeah, da, 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 da. Oh, you meant now. Oh man, why did I do that? I'm an idiot. Two. Two lights can't be dead. At the same time? New at 6, Aberdeen now has a fresh start after months of construction and anticipation. The city held a grand opening for its new grocery store, Freshly Market. WTVA Garner Montgomery went to the grand opening where the new store is serving up fresh food and new job opportunities in the area. Groceries here at Freshly's. The new store is located in North Aberdeen at the point and after months of prep work and anticipation, it's finally open for business. To celebrate the big day, Freshly's gave one lucky person a chance to shop at the store and get as much as they can in two minutes free of charge. After hustling and making the loop around the new store, 
This lady was able to save over $200. The new store was a passion project started by Aberdeen native Katina Holiday. She says she wanted to give back to the town that loved her. It's something fresh, it's something new, and it gives people something to be hopeful for. Like They're like, this story don't even look like it's supposed to be in Aberdeen. And I'm like, it is Aberdeen. Reporting from Aberdeen, Garner Montgomery, WTVA 9 News.